As Nigeria prepares for the 2023 election in a few weeks' time, the question of how are we going to get out of this perennial issues of underdevelopment, low growth, poverty, and what have you, continues to concern everybody. And perhaps will be from the fulcrum of the basis of the decision for 2023 that Nigerians are going to take. Nigeria has been seen as said to be a lucky country in many ways, but is it all about luck? We have our crude oil in large deposits in different parts of the country. We have mined this for quite a while in the Niger Delta region. And of recent, we hear the lucky news that we found in the Benue Gombe Axis as well, the Koumani project. In fact, a few days ago, it was said that crude oil was found again in Nasarawa State, which is the north central of Nigeria. Perhaps in Abuja, where we are, there's also crude oil available. And then we also had more good news about the presence of lithium all over Nigeria, in many places in Nigeria, let me say, put it that way. And, and this is meant to be one of the most sought after resource across the world these days. This is aside from the presence of many minerals, from barite to columbite to tantalite to zinc to, in fact, indeed, maybe another few dozens of different kind of minerals. But the lesson Nigeria seems to we have learned from now, even though if we haven't taken it on board, is that just having those resources in raw form and shipping them out abroad, okay, with other people's technology, will not a country make. Nigeria will probably never get prosperous by doing that. But what do we do? So today, we're going to be discussing with one of our friends who's been here before, Mr. Patrick Odiego. And we're going to be discussing on the solid mineral sector. What are the prospects of Nigeria? What should we be doing going forward? What is even available? And why are we so blessed? According to one of those old sayings, why is it that Nigeria has all of these resources and we're still at this point? Welcome, Mr. Patrick. Thank you so very much. You see, you heard uh, my uh, background, you know, just uh, the, the, the background that I tried to lay. And why is Nigeria so blessed? Indeed, <laughs> let's start from that point. And uh, is this blessing, is it a cause in disguise? Or why are we still at this point? Never. Blessing can never be a cause. Hmm. The country, I think God told the rest of the world, hold on. I want to sign off my signature wow. at a location. It happens to be Nigeria. Wonderful. And I like the positivity. No, Nigeria is blessed, has always been blessed. Mm. If you look at the bodies of water, as uh, circles Nigeria, there are many nations that don't have anything but water. Mm. Water is a huge resource. So in terms of natural endowment, Nigeria is second to none. You introduce a lot of uh, minerals. Nigeria is so highly mineralized. Just go around Abuja. Take Abuja as a test case. Yes, even Abuja here. Go around Ab Abuja. You see the rocks. What are those rocks? Mm. They're minerals. Hey, but are we going to blast all our rocks? Or? You don't necessarily need to. Some are monuments yes. that can fetch other we got a Zuma rock uh, around the corner here. Other, other resource. Okay. It's about value understanding and value appreciation. How do we appreciate the value that we have mm. in terms of value addition, in terms of increasing the value intentionally? Mm. The issue that we have in Nigeria is that we seem to have locked ourselves with a, with a chain. Mm. And we are thinking that money ought to be given to us. So there is that embedded mindset that money, money is something that is given to us instead of money that we earn and then we appropriate to make our life livable. And I'm, I, I must kind of suggest that um, this mindset that you're talking about is present among the political class and now increasingly even across the, 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 the even civilians, even young people. Because today, I mean, I was just taking a drive down from, um, indeed, Nasarawa State here, Karu area, 
And you know, look at that terrain. And it occurred to me that look, there's so much to be done in this country. Why would somebody wake up and say, come on, give me money? If somebody would apply themselves, there should be something that will come out. But if you have that mindset of, you know, money should be given to me, then you have a problem, you know. How do we get out of this? Um, we have to be intentional. We need to look at our citizens as the major resource, hmm. which before now is not the case. In some clients, they use citizens as a weapon for their own personal development, hmm. which comes every four years. These are tools that will give us, get us into an office. But the question is, what are you getting into the office to do? You're getting into the office for you to have just dispense money. Exactly. I mean, if that's the Dispensing case, dispensing money. We could have um, hired, we could have sourced Nigeria to a management company. Exactly. And say, guys, money. this is what we think we have, and this is the value you'll be giving to us every month. Then all of us can go into maybe I'll be chilling out somewhere in um, in uh, uh, VI. Yes. Just like they are doing in um, in Dubai, the the Emirate. Right? The Emirates themselves are giving some value. That's true. From bet. So we can capitalize everything in Nigeria and call a care PMG and say, guys, this is what we have <laughs> in this place, in this location. This is for you, this is for us. Be giving it to us. And all of us can maroon ourselves somewhere. We need to get it right. We need to become a bit more serious in this country. Honestly. We need to stop these pranks. We are playing pranks with the major tool that we have. That tool is us, Nigerians. If we Nigerians don't have knowledge, OK, look at Google. Google is going to be taken out of market very soon. Mm. Yes. Microsoft are bring um, a banger, right? They call it chat GPT. Yes. You, you just mention your name. You tell you everything. Else. Even your grandfather, what he didn't tell you, they will remind you. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so knowledge is key. Knowledge. To knowledge. add the value to those minerals we are talking about, right? Absolutely. So that is really the crux of the matter. Is that you have um, barite, lead, zinc is not news. Mm. That you add value to what you have and use it to make your life better here. Not for people, exactly. in, not for people in UK, mm. US, China, India, this, that. Those ones are the laziness of our mind. You know, now, look at this lithium. You know, I understand it's a very principal component in, in making batteries. I don't know what else is used for. Um, I know that coltan, which you can find in Benue, in Joss area, you know, that one goes into every phone, every laptop made in this world. Yes. You know, that mineral goes in there. They get quite a bit from Nigeria. They get from DR Congo as well, which happens to be the two countries with the hugest um, uh, poverty problem in the world as we speak, you know. So this, this lithium is used for battery. And, and, and people who are talking about um, um, renewable energy, green energy, they are, we are going towards battery now, you know. And we have that resource here. What, what the Minister for Solid Minerals did say at some point that uh, I think they were contacted by uh, this guy, Tesla, uh, Tesla yes. Elon Musk and co. And he said, well, no, we're not just going to be selling to you. Come and establish. Of course, there are issues with establishing companies in Nigeria, factories and so on. And so that deal didn't quite work out. But I'm sure that if Musk needs to still get his lithium from Nigeria, he will. What is the way forward on this lithium? I must commend the Honorable Minister. Yeah. He's right on the money, 100%. Mm. Because, look, if you don't come up with your natural ambition, they will continue to hold, give you the shorted end exactly. of the stick. Yes. So it's about who do we think as a people? Who are we as a people? Mm. If we are just a dumping ground, you can remain a dumping ground. Mm. Lithium price has gone up from $5,000 as of a couple of years ago, right? Power. Power what? Of a kg or something. No, a, 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 ton. a processed ton mm. of lithium mm. has gone from five thousand dollars to over over fifty thousand dollars. Understand. So you can see the quantum leap. So what you are saying is that if you have a li lithium itself, it's a, a tiny mineral inside a rock. Okay. The rock could be spodumen, epidolite, etc. Lithium content can reach from 2% or 0.4 hmm. in, a, in a rock. Hmm. Like this rock, let's assume that this is lithium, right? Yes. 
you can have 0.4% of this. So that simply means that 99.9906 is something else. Something else. That'd be right? extracting. That 0.4 mm. has a normal value that it makes this economical. Mm. In Nigerian context, the lithium content in some places you have 0.4. In Nigeria, in some places, you have 13 percent. No, you don't say. I am telling you the gospel truth. <laughs> but which state can we find this lithium? There here? are so many states. Mm. There are so many states. One of the states that has a very good lithium mineralization is Kwara State, or your state, mm. right? These states are really a defined zone because lithium actually was or lithium-based minerals, yes. right? Mm. Were things that were assumed to be waste. Wow. Covering gemstones. Wow. So those that are mining gemstones today are going back into their dump. Wow. <laughs> are moving their dump. And it's like their business model Has changes changed overnight, overnight, right? So how does Nigeria take much more advantage of this, right? Nigeria as a country needs to become more daring, more ambitious, right? We need to, we need to redefine more, right? what, is, what is in us as people. Mm. That thing is very, very crucial. Because if we don't define it, we will continue to... A priest got burnt the other day, yeah. right? Mm. Those kind of stuff, distortions, right? Mm. Distractions will continue to be the case. Mm. It becomes highly charged political, negative politics. Instead of understanding that we have enough to make everybody very comfortable. Honestly, yes. But we need to understand the essence of leadership. Because you need leadership to do this. Yes. In leadership that... Look at our banks. If I'm the president of Nigeria, I will call Miners Association of Nigeria. I will call CBN governor, tell him everybody should sit down here. Nobody will go anywhere until all the licensed miners are working. Absolutely. Nobody should. They will stay there. Hunger will kill everybody. There is no food. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will drink even water. Find solution to these things. Because it's a no-brainer. If a mineral is embedded in Nigerian earth, and we are speaking English. The, what annoys me majorly is our institutions are so, are so, can I say, lazy in the operative mindset that you come in and you see a man that goes out in the morning and scratch. An institution will call him illegal miner. Who does that? Illegal miner. Yes. Mm. Who does that? You've already seen what he's doing. Okay, let's even admit that he's doing something illegally, right? But he's doing it. So doesn't it behove on you to come with extension services and meet him there and say, look, this is the right way to do this. In so doing, you will not generate revenue from his activities to the best interest of the state. We need to change the overall the mentality. mentality. We yeah. must change. Mm. We can't continue like this. Zimbabwe has woken up and they said you must add value to, to their lithium content. Nigeria. From a layman perspective, I would say that we are more lithium-based mineral oh. than most of the minerals that we have. Would you say we strike, uh, we've struck luck again? Another. This is big. This is even goal. bigger than oil. Forget oil and gas. Really? I say forget oil and gas. In fact, if ah. Nigeria is pulling its weight, yes, we should be producing 10 million barrels of oil every day. We should go Honestly. all out to every everywhere there is license. We must maximize that production. How can we continue to? put our chain, and dragging the chain, dragging ourselves back, bringing things that are no news to be news. We need to become radical, be positively radical, positively, right? Yeah. To be able to create value for the best interest of Nigerians, not for my interest. Yeah, but as I, I do have a problem with uh, the contribution of uh, our intellectual wing, you know, because it seems like, oh, the thing, we just go to university, we carry certificates, we're not using these degrees to help ourselves. We're so dependent on foreigners to come and help us to mine this one, mine that one. And then they give us whatever they want and all of that. We can't even use these things. In fact, perhaps rather than tell uh, Tesla to come and start a company, why are we not starting the company ourselves? I, I, but I, I want you to hold your thoughts yeah. there. We'll go on a quick break. And when we come back, you sure. attack that question. Okay.
Welcome back, viewers, and uh, we'll be discussing with Mr. Patrick Odiego on prospects of the solid mineral sector and the you know luck, good luck that seems to be following Nigeria everywhere. What do we do with our good luck? So welcome back. As I posed the question to you before we left, you certainly did. Yes. Um, I don't know if the company will want me to mention their name at this time, but I'll, let me just be um, a bit silent on their name. Okay. But I know a company, a Nigerian company, that is um, trying to uh, explore lithium content okay. in terms of doing those value addition in country. So to that extent, I think a lot of good things will happen this year, not next year. Because look, these resources are there for us to take maximum advantage of it. So it's going through licensing now, so it's quite okay. sensitive. Okay. So yeah. I won't mention it now. Mm. But something in that space is coming for lithium. Now, if you look at other minerals, mm. value addition creates multiplicities of wealth. Yes. There is value chain of wealth. Yes. That's what value addition does. Mm -hmm. So the minister telling Tesla, look, yes, we have lithium, lithium ore. You need to add value in order to extract the component that you're going to mm. put in your battery. Valid. Right? Mm. So by the time you go through all those value chain, instead of us having maybe $300, $400, we will keep $30,000. Mm. Who will not want to do that? These are the type of money Africa has been leaving on the table. We shouldn't be doing that. We should generally be extremely aggressive. Our opportunities are not for your opportunity. Our opportunities for our best interest. Exactly. First. Mm, first. Because he that goes to equity comes with clean hands, right? Mm. Because your skin is pale, does not give you any right to have a better life than us. Uh, absolutely. Right? So yeah. we need to define this thing and make it very, very bold and very clear. Mm. Unapologetically, because our life matters. Absolutely, it yeah. does. Yes, so yes. if our life matters, mm. what is it that exactly. we need to be, you know? By, by way of education, that yes. rock you held up that time is uh, barite, yeah? Yes. And uh, that's the white one, the whitish one. Uh, yes. And, and the one, the one on this side is zinc. Th this is zinc. That one is zinc. Zinc okay. is a very, very important mineral. Uh, also valuable. Extremely valuable. If you and I must have 15, minimum 20, 25 gram. In our body? Yes. Okay, that's zinc. Every they day. They take it as tablets. Sometimes. Yes. Okay. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. You extract this. The percentage of this zinc is above 60% zinc content. What I'm holding in my hand. Mm. It's above 60%. Because there is intercalation. There is barite attached to it. Oh, yeah. Because that's all that. three are coming from the same mine. Same mine. Yes. So um, how do you get and, such? And this other shiny one is what? This one here is lead. Okay, that's lead. That's lead. Lead is used. This is bullet that our militaries are firing. Ah. This is your car battery. This is as important as lithium. Ah. Because, yes, if you understand, lithium also comes with the aspect that will enable the car to start. Yes. So there's another type of battery that must be with lithium battery. So these things are need to be, our universities need to improve. They are not improving. Our universities, right? They need to improve. They are chasing um, pocket, in, pocket you know knowledge you know, in, instead of applicable said, knowledge. Which is another topic of uh, another day. You know, because my agony is that I'm seeing more and more that the, uh, our, you know, I mentioned that intellectual sector earlier on. They seem to want to remain in their comfort zone. The federal government to bring money every month. We pay ourselves salary. Everybody, you know, you, they are uh, awarding those certificates. Nobody is going anywhere. They are really resisting. I'm thinking, I wish that the universities will come up and, you know, even the, the lecturers, they do some management buyout and remove the hand of government. Because if you are subjecting yourself to politicians, you cannot grow intellectually. The, at the end of the day, they will dictate your curriculum and dictate who does what. But in universities need to, because apart from this, you have mentioned, what you mentioned now is that our universities need to be able to add value to this thing, you know, mine themselves, do all these practical things. Do you know also, I understand there's no, no university in Nigeria that has ability to, to refine uh, one barrel of crude oil. Uh, the other time they said somebody in Ahmad Belo could, but I was saying this one time and some uh, uh, people in the sector said that's not even proven. 
But why should it be Amadu Bello University having that capability? What has happened to Uniport, um, University of Uyo, all of those universities in the Niger Delta, where they have been teaching petroleum engineering, petroleum this for, for 60 years. Yes. And the, the students get the B engine degree or whatever, or masters, even PhD. And they, have, they cannot pass this thing through the process that we are not waiting for the poor fire boys <laughs> to show that it is possible to carry crude oil and, 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 and refine and get diesel and all of that. It's, we have an elitist mindset. Perhaps. The there are people that think so entitled. Maybe you're born in a family with um, some spoons, right? Mm -hmm. Could be silver, platinum, whatever, <laughs> right? So they go with this mindset and continue to ride this rough shield on average Nigerians. They don't think they have a responsibility on those Nigerians. I'm seeing prevalence of uh, Jerry Khan coming out on the street again. So maybe there's a scarcity in yes. the making, right? Mm. Now, those guys can actually set everywhere on fire, right? <laughs> so, so if we don't do the needful, we are sitting on a keg of gunpowder. I'm sorry to say this. But then there's also pluses. There's a lady that I saw on LinkedIn, right? That somebody, Nureddin Akinyemi, uh, 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 posted her experiment, her thesis. And what did she do? She used plastic, all these plastic sachets, to turn it into kerosene, right? And I know somebody that can actually help her. So I posted that she can get in touch, so I can introduce her to somebody that can help her to monetize that uh, invention. Right? Because this is what we must do in this country. You know, people think that there's issue with Nigerians, you are Igbo, you are this, you are No, there's no issue. It's just the political space that is so bereft of what to do innovatively with Nigerians that are allowing all these Honestly. manipulations and distortions. But that mass mobilization is not there. It's not there. Mass mobilization towards productivity. Absolutely. Letting the young people of Nigeria know that, listen, you can build your own country. You have to build your own country. We Number must. two, we ensuring must. that fewer of the young people, the children of this country, are dropping through the cracks, you know, walking around the old place instead of building their minds up, you know. That, that's how the great countries are created. I mean, you know, before we go, so I wanted to ask also that, um, so do you think that, you know, we should begin to mainstream the contribution of crude oil, I mean, uh, solid mineral to, to, to our budget, to our country's economic growth, GDP contribution? Because up to you now, when you look at Nigeria's annual budget, the only assumption that is made is crude oil. Yeah. So one day, I, I remember ch challenging the Minister of Finance recently to say, you know, in one of their sessions, and of course the DG budget was there, that said, why is it all we do is this crude oil? And, and there's also, we make a mistake also, you know, which is a national mistake. We, the assumption on, on our budget is we want to drill 1.65 million barrels of crude oil every day. We sell the crude oil at $75 per barrel. Eh? <laughs> That's what it is. And, the, you know, then we we'll now, so we we'll sell it at 75 Then the benchmark, this thing, rate between Naira and this thing, and, 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 and dollar is further than so, so, so. You know, that's it. Now, what that means is that we are giving anybody an impression that the entire 1.6 million barrel is for Nigeria to eat yeah. without even cost of production. Sure. However, the cost of production, including what goes to the um, international oil company, is about 80% yes. of that 1.6 million. Yes. So I told them that. But we can, should we not also, if crude oil, crude oil is a mineral, these are also minerals. Should we not be making good assumptions about lithium, about the sector as a whole, or about lithium, about barite, about zinc, about whatever, to say this is our expectations so that we can take that sector even more serious? I agree with you entirely. I think that um, the structure that we run thus far is more like a state capture structure. There is no reason why they should even be bothered. Hmm. So every year they come out with the same thing, they add yeah, this, same. they do this. It's just for them to touch their hands into, nip their hands into the money. No nation. The money could be a whole lot more than the. Uh, you so know. much more. And for, for everybody, go around for everybody. Let me talk out briefly about Berite, right? African University of What's it used technology. for? This is using all, the mainstay of Nigerian economy. This is really where 
I think that Nigeria has failed me personally, right? Because as the Secretary General of Association of Miners and Process of Berite, we have agitated, we've gone to Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, engaging them, NMPC engaging them and saying, why is it that we have this product available in Nigeria in more than eight to nine states? What we have can last Nigeria in the next 22,000 years. <laughs> I don't know if you heard 22, me right. 22,000 years. I say 22,000 years, right? But guess what? Nigeria is importing this. <laughs> but this product is used for what exactly? It is used sector? in drilling. Without this, you can't drill. Because it does two functions in drilling. It suppresses the pressure. Okay. And it lubricates. Mm. And then if they want to close the... It's more like cement. This is more like cement. Mm. Yes. It's similar so to... When they want to close the well through the... You have to pump this. Mm. It, it is crushed to fine powder. Oh, okay. It is crossed to fine powder, fine powder when they want to. And then blended with other base oil oh, I see. into drilling mud. Hmm. You can't drill one single oil without this. So we have been careless. As a nation, honestly, if Nigeria is a people, we will be receiving cane every month. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Right? So we can still revise. And it's very, very revisable. Because all we need to do is to come from the point of truth. Yeah. We can put in... I always say this, people maybe don't like it. I say, look, we can use blockchain to yes. take everybody to point of truth. Mm -hmm. Today, there is a camera, artificial intelligent camera that can follow every citizen. It doesn't matter if we're one million. One camera will follow all of us individually. Wow. It's already existing. In Dubai, they have it, right? So when you go and see this thing, it looks as if these people are so sophisticated. There is nothing sophisticated. Nigerians have wi <laughs> wizards. We have knowledgeable people, technologists, we have them. We have computer wizardry. Mm. So anything that is lacking that you don't have, don't worry about it. Your brother has it. You team up, right? But what has been the challenge is that we are so elitist. Everybody wants to be um, a mm. special person. Yeah, exactly. I live in Metama. OK. That Metama where you're living, somebody from Pape can come <laughs> and, <laughs> Which is and smoke you out. Which is happening. Right? It's terrible. So we must do the needful. Take England, for example. If they don't have social welfare, and snow is, snow is beating everybody, yes. right? There is no food in your tummy. You weaponize the citizens. Absolutely. So that's what we have that's done That's what we've Nigeria. done. So we need to get it right. But on our minerals, we need to become extremely intentional, right? OK, now we are starting to see there's better value chain. It's coming mm. out now. Market is coming out. Mm. But the market that is coming out, our banks are not on the page. So I have an order. I send a message to a bank that uh, the company has given me an order. I need to produce to be able to supply, and I need money to mobilize to site to supply. The bank will say, OK, um, show me your, your, uh, your cash flow, the previous yeah, years. Yeah, five years. When I was in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> five years cash flow. Yes. And yeah. I look at them and say, sorry, this company has given me contract to supply minerals, material that can create up to 200 jobs, good paying jobs, right? The site is at a location in Nigeria, and I'm going there. So please, let's two of us go there. Now, this is the type of exploration that I've carried out. Maybe it is not up to that global standard, because that global standard will cost four to $5 million to do. I don't have it. And I'm not ready to turn myself to a criminal, to hold somebody up if you don't give me the money. Both of us will die here. No, it hasn't come to that. But we have done some low-level exploration that has shown us that this product is available. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. It's always you. a delight talking to you. <laughs> You're doing uh, a great yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One person with a great passion for what you do for this country and for the black people anywhere they can be found in the world. It's a pleasure. We are blessed people. Thank you very much. We are blessed much. people. Thank you. Look at COVID now. You saw what COVID, uh, exactly. COVID did. Thank I mean, you. okay, what did COVID do to us? <laughs> Thank you. Man. We'll see yes. you about that the next time. Thank, Thank you. you very much, viewers, for listening. Uh, it's been great, uh, you know, presenting this show. See you next week.